You can listen to it on 103.1 FM and the studio hotline 0114-2425-200 and WhatsApp 078-855-99786. Facebook Iman FM Radio and you know that we have now I- Iman FM TV uh, on the Facebook as well. So th- for those who can who would like to see us uh, face to face and then and, and see uh, our guests as well and listen at the same time, you can see us on Iman FM TV. You can follow us on Twitter as Iman FM 1031 and Skype FM 1031 um, Today we are um, f- at the beginning of the show I would like to uh, welcome my guests again I have with me today uh, my my lovely and your lovely uh, uh, Dawn <laughs> I thought you were going to say your daughter then. <laughs> no, daughter, my daughter, I will introduce her in a different way. Though. Hello, guys. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, alaikum salam. And I have Manar with me as well. Assalamu alaikum, Manar. Alaikum salam. Manar uh, is my daughter and she would like to ex- um, discuss with you and, and share with you her experience in, uh, uh, in education as we are speaking today about education. Um, I am today a little bit confused, guys, so you have to take this in consideration while you are listening to my show today. Uh, the show today is very sensitive as usual, and we are speaking to people from the perspective of facts. Uh, what we are trying to do in learning is gaining to give you more knowledge so you can make your decisions in life, and you make them based on understanding to the main aspects of life and how you build a, a better life for yourself and, and for your children and um, everyone involved in making the decision you are involved in making their decisions or maybe helping them to make decisions uh, and uh, in the last few weeks we were talking about a very critical issue such as uh, homeschooling and education and we spoke about the a little bit about uh, don book uh, wallahi book i will go back to that book uh, i didn't finish reading it so don i'm so sorry i, di- I wasn't ha- i didn't have the chance to yeah, I'm not ready yet. <laughs> yeah, I'm not. I'm not ready to go with you on details. I have f- few comments ready for you, oh, okay. but I want to go away. I mean, I've nearly re- finished writing my third. Book, <laughs> so you can have to <laughs> I will do my best, Don. Uh, but the book, because the book um, has, um, uh, Wallahi book has touched uh, many areas, and uh, it's uh, telling uh, Don's perspective of what happened in Egypt, and uh, her perspective of his. Islam and practicing Islam as well. There are many issues there which I would like to open up with Dawn and discuss them and see how she created that conception and uh, what we wanted to tell people from those uh, ideas she she put in her book. It's a very interesting book but you have to be careful when you read it guys. You have to all have a really open mind when you read the book because uh, some from my perspective some of the statements uh, Dawn made in the book can uh, make if you are not open to what she's saying, it might make it might make you ma- uh, make a wrong judgment and wrong decision. So, be open. What I mean by being open when you read the book is to uh, have different perspectives and see how people will end up with a specific judgment, and specific statements, and which is very interesting to be honest. And to see the world how, how it has been seen from someone else's eyes, uh, who, with experience as dawn experience. Uh, today we are speaking about education again and why education because education guys is the most important aspect of life and in, uh, it's on, it's not only about us today it's about the future we are educating for the future and we are educating the new generation who are going to build the nations in the future and they are going to c- interact with the world in the future and for those who are making the decisions for those young people who are studying, they have to be very clever and they have to be very honest and they have, they have to be very human because education is about the humanity itself and how we help this human to, to transformation from a stage to stage and how we shape their minds and how we help them to shape their decisions. What is happening in the education is very ridiculous now in England and uh, I'm speaking about England uh, education because I am involved in many ways. I have children in schools, I have friends in schools, I am involved in research and education and I have friends who are teaching in the education sector and I see the future of the world where it's going with these all problems about education. So we have to speak up and make 
you know, argument and, and, and to be very critical and to put all the lines uh, or the red lines under the words or the practices which we see is wrong. Uh, so today, guys, I have Don with me and I have uh, Manar with me to discuss the issue of education. I will start with Manar, actually, though. Yeah, and usually, usually start with oldest. So today, I will start with youngest. Well, I don't mind. <laughs> Yeah, you are open minded. <laughs> yeah, I'm open minded. Yes, you are not stuck to the hierarchical structure of the. <laughs> God, no. If you haven't got an open mind, you're not going anywhere. Yes. <laughs> Menar, uh, first of all, thank you very much for accepting to going today. I know we had a lot of conflict today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Well, we make it. Yeah? yeah. <laughs> so thank you, Mama, for coming today. Menar, uh, first of all, I want to understand your perspective of education. What is education to you, Mama? Education is what you need to build yourself onto for the future. Like, it's not for now, it's for, like, what comes after. And to be honest, right now, what we're learning has... It's not going to help me in any way at all in the future, except, like, making my brain, like, healthier and, like, making me remember stuff. But I, I don't think I'll need, like... I don't think I'll need, like, certain bits of maths or English, maybe. Um, I'd rather, like, go to, like, a job as like, like what do you call it, like um, an apprenticeship? Yeah, like an apprenticeship, then stay in a classroom, just sitting down and writing, like be more adventurous and I think you'd learn more. So will the teachers, they'll learn more about the job because it's not like they've like been everywhere. So the teachers would learn and the, so would the children. And it's really boring just sitting down and writing and looking at the board. I think you want to like discover stuff and like, be more open to the world and you'd learn more if you were like outside and like exploring so your understanding of education is about exploring and learning for the future yeah okay now i would pass the question to don what is education to you don every day is a school day as they say you know we i think we touched on it last last time it's not about like manar says it's not about sitting in a classroom uh, looking at a board or having a teacher that actually only is regurgitating stuff from inside a textbook well who do you know who wrote that textbook what was their opinion, what was their learning how did they get to that point you know, you've got to think and discover for yourself, so Manar is absolutely right, I mean when I when my boys are in the classroom right? You know, what did you learn today and they come home there and sometimes I'm just like they what? <laughs> And or they'll they'll be like we were saying last week as well um, about the homeschooling. Schools drag out a subject so long. You don't need to drag out a subject as long as they do in schools. What and you know so it, getting the children active inside the classroom and um, you know being using their physiology in, as part of the learning process. Um, I remember the um, my history teacher um, Alan Rigglesworth. Um, we were learning about the Battle of Hastings in 1066. Well, we changed the whole classroom into like a battleground. We turned the t tables upside down, the chairs were upside down. He had his divided into two, like into the the two sides. Um, he got us to write what we thought that these people were going to be experiencing, what those people were experiencing, really putting ourselves into their worlds. You know what they were experiencing, and you know it is about discovering. It is about living into that moment and exploring. You know, whether you're actually physically getting on a boat or whether you're going off uh, traveling around the world or whether you um, are just, you know, exploring your own mind and your own body and your own ideas, but they're not getting that. I mean, Manar just said about teaching them to remember stuff. Mm. Well, that's how is that productive? You don't need to keep being given a piece of text just to remember it. It's about because I remember, um, to share an example, I don't know if you've got to this bit in the book yet, but they wanted me to, when I was in Egypt in one of the schools, they wanted me to create an exam for my students. I was not allowed to give them a new piece of text that they had not seen. It had to be the same piece of text and it had to be the same words. I'm like, but how do we know that they've now understood the concept and mm -hmm. they can actually transfer that knowledge? Mm -hmm. You've got to be able to transfer your knowledge and understand what the concepts are. Mm. Otherwise, it's just redundant learning. I will go to Menar again. Thank you, Dawn. Mm -hmm. I will go to Menar back again. 
uh, we were in, in the last few weeks when are at home talking about how the education has changed um, can you give the audience from your perspective mama what is how do you think the education has, you were in education now since uh, how, how old are you Mana? Five, I'm 13 now so since five years old basically yeah. been you've been education. more mama you've been since you were five years old in yeah, education but so before that because of nursery yeah so, so basically you've been seven eight years now in education yeah. now in the last two years or maybe the last year you discover a lot of changes in education. Can you, st- 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 for the audience, Mama, to understand, can you point them one by one and, and slowly explain them so they will understand? Because you have to take in consideration that we have audiences from different backgrounds. So to be able to understand, can you break down your words so they will understand? Um, yeah, basically, I think it's changed since I started from primary to secondary. Because from primary, you'd, you'd be like, a lot more like obviously you're starting as a child and no one's telling you what you need to do and they're like you know you're being like settled but then when you once you get to secondary school you have more critical like fixed mind onto what you have to do especially for your GCSE you, you get really pressured and stressed and I don't think children learn like that if a teacher's like sh- telling them oh your GCSEs are in a year or oh, the next week like my sister Naga she's un- she's under so much stress right now and, she, and she's not doing very well in a certain subject and they're making her do a lower paper and I don't think they should, I think they should like let her choose her ability. They're putting her in like one group of ability and making her do it. So the highest she can get now is a C or a high or, or a low B. And she can do better than that if she tr- if she put her mind to it, but then she's not letting her have the chance to do it. And it's changed a lot because to be honest, everything I've learned is like, is not relative. like. In nursery, you'd go like on trips, and in primary, you'd go on trips. But once you get older, they make they like put you to like a certain thing you have to learn. Like, I'm not saying like the um, like the government. I don't know how to say it. Like the government, I think they have teachers have to teach it. Mm. They can't teachers can't teach from what they want. They have to teach it, like what the government, what subjects, and what they do each term, and um teachers know like they've obviously studied a lot about schools and how to teach children so they should know how to teach them and not put a fixed mindset to children ah oh, this is uh, this is a word a uh, fixed mindset uh, education uh, dawn is about not uh, what uh, how to teach children what to think it's how to teach them how to think and uh, and uh, uh, borrowing from Mana, what she said, it seems that they are teaching the children to learn what to think, not how to think. Why don't? Because they themselves don't either. Well, for me, uh, are, we could surmise all we like um, mm. why we think, but I mean, for me personally, uh, two things that a lot of the teachers themselves don't know how to think. Um, so they struggle on teaching the child how to think or they don't know how to articulate how to think. Mm-hmm. Um, or the fact that the government don't want you to think. Sorry, I just noticed you've got a CD up there that's got the word Mubarak on it. Mm. And I was like, ugh. <laughs> well, <laughs> so, uh, I think it's... Uh, Ramadan Mubarak. Yeah. Yeah, we don't say Ramadan Mubarak in our house anymore. Yeah. It's Ramadan Kareem. <laughs> <laughs> We got rid of Mubarak a few years ago. <laughs> um, it's irrelevant. <laughs> um, but it, you know, the, but then again, it's a distraction technique, isn't it? Yeah. There's a lot of distractions going on from actually taking your attention. They're telling you what to think because they want you to believe a certain set of uh, ideas and values. And instead of when, because when people start thinking and they start exploring for themselves, they start questioning. Mm. And governments don't want you to question them. Mm-hmm. They want to give it a distraction technique, like this upcoming election. What is that about? Like seriously, they're having such a circus down in part in in Westminster. I don't. I'm just absolutely appalled that it's happening. 
but again it's like the the way in which the all these distraction techniques are going on a lot of the teachers there they want to teach their subject they want to explore it for themselves but they themselves are bombarded with all this red tape that they've got to do mm. they've got a mark in the green pen or they've got to do this or they've got to do this and they've got and it's no longer about teaching a subject it is just about ticking boxes mm -hmm. so the teachers that are great teachers that actually do want to teach you how to think and actually have a love for their subject aren't actually being given the opportunity to do that and the teachers that do do it a lot of them are managed out of schools mm -hmm. I, uh, in the last few weeks guys I've been uh, in a regular touch with uh, or interaction with different uh, stakeholders who are in education like teachers like uh, middle leaders like students like pupils and i had this kind of short conversation with them about what's happening in education and it seems that they are not happy at all no mm. one is happy no. and i'm wondering Menar, uh, if you are not happy to go to school you know Menar all the time when she come back from school say i want to ask her uh, how was and i i sometimes avoid asking her because I know the, the result and it, it hurts me. I don't want to hear it sometime, you know what mm -hmm. I mean? And, and then she said, uh, I am not, I didn't have a good day. And you hear this from Jacob and you hear that from Nagam. And they are three in different education uh, school and they are three in different uh, levels. So Manar, why would you not be happy to be in school? I'm not happy because I'm not learning anything. I'm not learning new things. Maybe, yeah, I'll learn how to do something, but that, that it's gonna go one day like I don't I won't need it I, won't, I might need it once like how to multiply or like add I might need it like sometimes in my life but I'm not learning new things it's always the same thing all the time and say you're learning in history it, it's really like not it's really depressing learning about the fact that people were killed and like World War One happened World War Two happened I'd rather know what's happening now in the world than what happened Going back to what happened over the war, can you tell the audience the story of your geography? But I was in geography and it's, an, it's a new term, so we have a new subject. The subject's about Israel and Palestine and the conflict there. And the thing that my teacher told me, he was like, Israel is a country, but Palestine was never a country. And that's it, like it's Israel on its own. Like, I'd, like From my point of view, you shouldn't teach that to children because that is your point your like perspective and you shouldn't like over like many people believed it in my class as well really yeah like quite a lot of people believed it they were like oh and they kept asking questions and it, he was like oh like israel is a country and they were there first basically and stuff like that and it's not about who's there first it's about why can't they live all together? That's what he should be teaching. How you could solve the conflict, that's what he should be teaching. Not ha what, like, you should know geographically. And that America rewrit the map. You shouldn't rewrite a map if it's there in the first place. That was a map, like, it was proper. Like, you can't keep rewriting the map until you wipe out. Like, my mum said, what is it called? Ethical cleansing. Ethical clean cleansing. Like, people, the most powerful countries, are uh, just, like, cleansing everyone they don't want. Like, they shouldn't be doing that. We should all be diverse and we should all be together. And why can't Israelis and Palestinians live together, even though like, they've been through a lot? Like, you shouldn't take someone's land when it's not yours in the first place Manar why do you think you know uh, this argument you are linking education to values you are saying you shouldn't take someone land you speak about you are speaking about the diversity do you think what they are educating now is linked to these values mama the values they meant uh, they said it is their values like uh, the British values is the diversity the loving the respecting do you think what they are educating now is, is it relevant? It doesn't really show it. Like, we don't properly learn about democracy, except about black history. Like, you do learn quite a lot about that and wh what they went through and what people thought. But it's always like someone attacking another type of race. And you shouldn't be learning that because you don't need to. 
like you should all to be together and you've got like a certain type of culture in our school and we've got really racist people because of what we're learning what we're learning makes our school really re like different and racist like i've got friends that are, are a bit racist and they are you're really racist don't you not there's no bit racist <laughs> she's, she's so i'm sitting here and i'm getting so angry with what i'm hearing yeah what is it, it is it is kind it is rude like i've got a friend well we're not friends anymore but she used to like um talk about a certain race like pakistani she used to talk about them and a certain race and they she used to like go back and be like oh like how are you and stuff like that and then go back to me and it really makes me upset because she knows like she knows that i don't like racism i tell her listen you shouldn't be doing that and then she goes back to them again and then it's just, it's not right it's because she's got no center of she's got no values herself she's got she doesn't know what to think because she's not been taught how to think and that is exactly what the government wants what the education system want they want you to be so confused so that you we said it the other week sheeple if you if you're not taught how to think and how to think for yourself then you will just follow the crowd and you will follow the majority and the moment you want to put your head above the precipice or you want to actually go well actually no i don't agree with you it's an uh, advertisement can you oh, keep it this is very important yeah this is your local community station iman fm on 103.1 fm sufi music show, Sufi music show. Matlub Hussain Ali Khan Sufi Music Show Bringing you the best in Sufi music Qualis, world music And the tradition of Sufi masters Every Thursday, 8 till 10 p.m. Only on Iman FM In the city of Sheffield If you ever have an accident Do not fear Mr. Compensator is here he can provide you with a taxi, prestige, or 4x4 replacement vehicle in just two hours. Call 0114-3863-386 or visit mrcompensator.co.uk and let the experts manage your claim. <laughs> Assalamu alaikum, this is Khalil Muhammad coming to you with an urgent appeal. One Community has established the first Islamic education, deaf and special educational needs center where deaf Muslims and non-Muslims can attend Islamic classes to learn more about Islam using sign language. However, this center is under serious threat and we need your currency hasna, a beautiful loan and your zakat to help us keep it open. Please visit our website islamfordeaf.co.uk That's Islam, F-O-R-D-E-A-F .co.uk or give us a call on 0121 291 7847 क्या आप रेडियो प्रेजेंटर बनना चाहते हैं या मीडिया इंडस्ट्री ज्वाइन करना चाहते हैं अपनी आवाज के जरिए अपनी कम्युनिटी की खिदमत करने का सुनहरी मौका ईमान एफएम पर आइए हम आपको बनाएंगे रेडियो प्रेजेंटर स्टूडियो ट्रेनिंग से लाइव प्रोग्रामिंग तक की तरबियत हासिल करने के लिए رابطہ करें 01142420551 या ईमेल कीजिए info@imanfm.com Equity Law Chambers Solicitors when your rights are at stake you need experienced defense lawyers the law firm of Equity Law our experienced team of professionals can assist you in all matters including family law immigration criminal law drug offenses road traffic cases fraud and money laundering call us today for expert advice on 01709 36 86 03 or visit us at elc-solicitors.co.uk equity law chamber solicitors advocating your rights
Had an accident? Not your fault. Car and solicitors, a team of professionals dedicated to winning you 100% compensation. With free advice and assistance, over 15 years of experience, assisting you with road traffic accidents, trips, slips, employees liability. We can recover your uninsured losses, i.e. vehicle damage, recovery, storage and loss of earnings. Car and solicitors, 351 Abbeydale Road, Sheffield. Come see us or call 0114 or visit carnsolicitors.com. Terms and conditions apply. Connecting you to your community. This is Amon FM. This is Amon. You're listening to Iman FM. Time for the news. Not to increase income tax and national insurance. That was the promise at the last election, but the Prime Minister is refusing to commit herself to the policy. Labour claims the Conservatives will hit lower and middle income people. Jeremy Corbyn's told the NAHT Teaching Unions Conference in Telford his priorities are clear. If it's a choice between a tax giveaway to the largest corporations or funding of our schools, our choice will be very, very different from the choice that's been made up to now. Madeleine McCann's parents insist progress is being made in the investigation into her disappearance. Wednesday marks 10 years since the three-year-old went missing in Portugal. MPs want supermarkets to sell more wonky fruit and veg instead of rejecting them from farmers. It's part of recommendations to cut down waste and the estimated £10 billion worth of food which is thrown away by households every year. In sports, Manchester United have failed to at least temporarily move into the Premier League's top four. They drew one all with Swansea, who are two points from the safety mark. Leaders Chelsea are about to start at Everton, knowing victory would take them seven points clear of Tottenham, who take on North London rivals Arsenal a little later. Antonio Conte's side will also qualify for next season's Champions League if they get at least a point. We are uh, very close to reach this target. It's an important target for, uh, for the club, uh, for, for the fans, for, for the players. Manchester City's match at struggling Middlesbrough is just about to kick off as well. Meanwhile, Bolton have been promoted to the Championship after a 3-0 win over Peterborough on the final day of the League One season. And at the F1 Russian Grand Prix, Ferrari's Sebastian Vettel led after 28 laps with Britain's Lewis Hamilton third for Mercedes. Ferrari's Kimi Raikkonen is second. That's the latest. I'm Andy Hayes. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Iman FM again. Learning is getting still going after the uh, nice news. <laughs> and they are talking about education anyway, so we are going back to them for this point. Of course, it's the studio hotline 0114242500 and the WhatsApp 0788. 5599786 and the Facebook Iman FM Radio and you can see us on the TV as well we are in Iman Leo <laughs> we are waving to you now uh, you can see us on Iman uh, TV Facebook and uh, you can follow us on Twitter at Iman uh, Iman FM uh, 103, uh, 1031 and Skype Iman FM 1031 uh, we were speaking about education and the, the mic was with Dawn, so we'll go back to Dawn. Sorry, Dawn, we have to go with advertisement. <laughs> I'm sorry, sweetheart. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I just find the whole... It has really upset me, the fact that, you know, because we... I mean, during the break we were talking about, you know, if they're saying that uh, Palestine doesn't exist, what are we saying to people... That you know we don't like you, so we're going to wipe you out. You know what? Who's next? North Korea? Uh, you know Mexico? Like, uh, we we you just can't do that. What is wrong? With, and you know then it brings into the issue like, what? Where are these people's moral compasses? Hmm. Do they actually have one? Hmm. Do they actually have any humanity or morality within them at all? And then the people that are not thinking, like, well, actually, well, no. These kids are sat in the classroom being told that a country does not exist, yet they know that if they thought about it, they would know that that country exists. And they're not actually going, well, why are they telling us that? Why are we not questioning that? But we can't, they're not allowed to. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. you Man, are you being shushed by the teacher? Yeah. yeah, yeah no, that. I wasn't being shushed. But to be honest with you, I don't want to get on called or sent to isolation. See, she's she's in fear of actually being put in isolation because she's going to question. Hmm. The moment you start questioning the teachers, or the, they're starting it from a very young age, you do not question your teachers. You do not question the government. You know what? If my boy, if I do something, I've told my boys always question. What is it it says in the Quran? Do not follow your forefathers blindly. You yes. know, and you have to keep questioning. The more you question, the more you learn, the more ilm you have, the more, you know, the more you actually... Hum human yourself. Oh, human, you human humanize, oh, humanize, hum humanize yeah. yourself. Yes. You just like... And then we wonder why there's so much bullying going on in the world. You know, whether it's in the school or whether it's in business organisations, you know, where you've got managers that, you know, and I was actually having this conversation with a, uh, with a really dear friend yesterday about how we don't actually have a lot of leaders anymore. Um, and leadership is a very, uh, is a subject very close to my heart. And I, you know, I'm teaching my boys leadership from a very early age. Um, and... We have all these processes. People are afraid to make mistakes these days for fear of being told that they uh, are weak or they're vulnerable or for getting punished. They're afraid to ask questions. And it's almost as if like you will do as you are told. And um, there's a really great song, You Are Free To Do As We Tell You. Mm -hmm. Yanni, Ida. <laughs> We're free to do as you tell me? Uh, no, I have a brain, I have my own morality, you know, and if I know that something is wrong, I'm going to question it. I've said to my boys, if I say or do anything that you don't agree with, let's have a conversation about it. I want them to think. And I have told my boys, you know, even if you get isolated at school, mm. if you've got a question, you ask that question. If a teacher wants you to do something that you're not happy with, you'd either say, I'm not going to do it because I'm not happy to do it because it's going to... I will tell my boys, you've got to stand up and be counted. You've got to go with what feels right for you. Be in alignment with who you are. Trust in your own instinct. If something does not feel right to you or you've got a question that you know is right, a very very relevant to the subject you're doing you ask that question and if you get punished then i will go in the school and i will deal with it uh i think i said the same to my daughter did i yeah you did and a certain thing happened like that as well i was in what basically is re in my school and yeah. And they should let children speak how they want in re it's a lesson where you can open up and debate about things and talk about things but we're doing religion at the moment and there are m many Muslims in my class and I got asked the question, if you were God, what what would you do? And I feel like that question is not appropriate for the children and they, for especially Muslim children, they can like, it's a sin answering it because they know they've been brought up to not answer stuff like that because it, it's not right, it's not... The if God is a lie, is closer to you than your jugular vein, that means you have that essence within you, right? Yeah, but you shouldn't be asked the question. If you were if a God, you, if you were God, it's only a question. If you were, yeah, if you were, but some like it's it's not good in the religion, and you have to answer it, or yeah. it's in insufficient way. Well, I agree with Menar, don't because oh. why I agree with Menar, we can't question because our our being is different to his being. We can't, uh, from my perspective and mm. from my understanding to religion, uh, that we are different to him. Uh, we can yeah, question. We are, but it's again, it's about a thinking mechanism. If we were in this position, what would we do? Whether it's God or whether it's a president or whether it's yeah, a parent uh, you, it's, a, it's, it's a, president, a president and parents, and uh, they are able to question everything except being a God because there is only one God, and we don't have His mind and we and don't it, have His it's knowledge. It's not that. It's people get offended. Like you can see people that people get offended too easily. Easily though, yeah, too easily. But <laughs> yeah, that's true. They, they do get offended quite easily. But asking a child that question at that age, they wouldn't know what to say. Like, I mean, a boy said, "If you miss asking me, if you were God, what would you do? What would you do?" And he was like, "Oh, I'd get loads of money, and I'd get like loads of like weed and stuff <laughs> like that." And it's it's just like they don't know yet, so you shouldn't ask that question yet. Before you asking a question to the children, what I'm trying to understand from Manar here, uh, I think uh, moral values and education are very connected. Uh, and when you ask a children specific a question, 
you have to build up first a moral land and a value land and then you ask questions which generate more cognitive uh, you know evaluation mm. more cognitive thinking you need to build a pro knowledge indeed oh. indeed so what is happening and i think what we we, we had this argument when the men are at home and what is happening they keep the children like in the uh, flat uh, space where they can't connect to anywhere mm. and they connect only to themselves and they don't have it a, 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 like a, a one land of values or one land of moral even if you connect to yourself that land you are standing on it you know what i mean so they, there is no kind of shared values where everyone can share that value and they communicate to it and link all your, their thinking to that value you know you are a leader uh, you are coach and you know about leadership and you know organizations can build up only on shared values mm. and can sh- uh, by sharing the knowledge and sharing that values and, and linking to the value of the mm. organization and you know i am writing paper now about the ethical failure of the stuff and it's influencing on the sur- survivability of organization and we are collapsing as mm-hmm. communities, as the humanity, mm-hmm. we are collapsing because we don't have shared values. And I think what is happening in the schools people now... People don't know what their values are, though. Yeah, thank you very much. This is what I'm going to speak to you they about. People it. really don't know what their values are because they don't think. They don't take time to go, well, OK, who am I? What do I stand for? What is important? I mean, as a coach, mm. whether it's a business coach or whether it's a life coach, depending on who I'm working with... Mm. Even you, know, you, were ju- you were just saying about, you know, an organisational shared values. Yes. You know, let's look, I mean, one of the things I'm writing about in my new book, Crossing the Line, is about how organisations actually, they need to start innovating. They really do. Everybody goes in for nine o'clock and then leaves at half past five. That puts a huge amount of traffic on the roads during the busiest times. But also when you think that you've got single mothers or single parents that, you know, their partner or their spouse may be working away or, you know, whatever it is. Um, it's actually putting parents and families into such hardship because organizations won't hire you if you can only do say 10 till 2 because you need to be on the school run yeah. or because you know you might actually i mean a friend of mine recently she um, she got pregnant while she was working she was managed out of the organization just because she wanted to take her back like really seriously the the organizers of this or the the leaders of these well they're not even leaders i can't even call them a leader the people who run yeah they're just managers they're Mm. just following processes and the thing Mm. is that when people follow processes it doesn't allow them to think how many times have we phoned up a um, a call center to deal with our mobile phone or our, our utilities and you know you can tell the people there are going through a script there's no thinking you know, there's a brilliant film called I, David Blake. I highly recommend everybody watches it. It was all about a guy who'd had a heart attack um, and basically he had his doctor signed him off. He needed to claim a, a little bit of help, you know, while he was on, off on uh, sick pay. But the woman who we were speaking to was just reading from a script. She wasn't actually, she wasn't being human. And we are dehumanising everyone. There's a film, uh, you know, the programme Star Trek... Mm. And there's been this film Star Trek, and there's a, a a race of people called the Borg, where they're all assimilated. Well, it's not about assimilation; it's about integration, like integration. you were saying. It yeah. is about integrating who we are, our different uh, our different knowledge uh, banks, our our different experiences. And like I say to my boys, the more you learn about others, the more you learn about yourself. Indeed, indeed. And celebrate our differences, but also celebrate our similarities. Mm-hmm. You know, and. I, I just find that I just get so frustrated that I actually I, I'm very close to taking my boys out of school again mm-hmm. um, even though they're really enjoying it and because like when I hear them coming home I didn't learn anything well why am I sending you uh, I will. I will hold you in here. This Menard. She keeps doing that. Uh, mm-hmm. Well, I'm <laughs> <laughs> I thought you were going to put another advert on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to bring Menard to the scene, oh. so we all connect. We oh. all integrate in the Sorry, image. Sorry, saying people. I dominate this. Yeah. <laughs> You can do whatever you want. You know, it's my show and learning is gaining. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> no, no problem, darling. <laughs> you have... You have Manar, yeah. <laughs> Manar, uh, 
borrowing from uh, Dawn, uh, the, the idea of diversity and integration, do you think that the schools these days, from your perspective, from what you see with Jacob, what you see with your friends, what you, what you see with yourself, because you are the sound of this generation, Mama, you are the sound of the future. Mm. Myself and Dawn are the, the sound of now. And maybe we are the sound of a, a, a very. Uh, we are we are oh, helping you. This is longer than <laughs> <I eat>. <laughs> <laughs> We are helping these children to see the future. This is uh, what I mean. I will. Yeah, because we see now and we see the past, mm -hmm. and you see the future, and we see the future with you. But we need to see it from your eyes because you are going to build this this future, and uh, you are the one we already started to make our mind and created our own values. We keep evaluating, yes, we keep learning. But now, from your perspective as, as a new generation who are going to go uh, for the future, and it seems very gloomy to me. I can't, it's very foggy. I can't see. Do you see with those all what they are, what you are learning in school? Do you see the future, Mama? I don't see the future, to be honest. We do not have like any lessons how to actually like I'm now getting closer to like being old and it's only a few years till I get my own house till I get my own job and I still don't know how to pay my bills how to t pay tax how to even find something to help me in the future I can't do that like I've learnt all that from my mum when I go out to the bank say I know how to put money in, in the bank now because I've learnt it from my mum and I don't know where she's learnt it from to be honest because I have never ever never learnt it in my school all I'm learning is what happened in World War Two, what happened Battle of Hastings and I shouldn't be learning that especially like, children need to develop new ideas not the same idea over and over again and then do a massive exam at the end after all your ideas are in your head I, I see no future with that at all like, I'd prefer like as I said before, like I'd prefer to go to a, a proper job and not even get paid for it. Like yeah, I don't even want to get paid for it this amount of time. I just want to learn a new thing to like, just for the future. Like I'd know how to come in, what time to come in, learn new things basically and explore new things. I don't really see a future right now. That's why I don't think I'm that much bothered into carrying on education after 16. Like I've told my mum I want to go straight to apprenticeship because I'm not learning anything. Like, it's it's not helping me or developing me in any way. So I'm really doubting going to future education after I finish secondary school. So when I'm learning from Dawn about the diversity, mm -hmm. I know you are, uh, you spoke earlier about racism and mm -hmm. about bullying. I know you, about bullying in your school, I know and bullying about other schools, and I know about the bullying policy. And with this education they are providing, do you think they are feeding the British value or the racism and bullying values and division values? What do you think? Well, I think they don't really mention it a lot, to be honest. They don't really... Honestly, they don't put pressure on to kids, obviously, to th th think a certain way. But what kids learn, especially with their family homes, and then they come to school and they learn that, and they go back to their family, and their family has to... They don't have to agree. Depends, really, what the, your family have learned, what your parents have learned, what they're telling you. But then they go back to school and then, le like, learn something else and that kind of affects how they think about people are you confused Mimi? a bit yeah what is really confusing you i'm confused what do you mean confused about what? yeah and the education education are you confused about everything has been provided and are you confused to make the image uh, to yourself what is the benefit of all this are, are you able to summarize so, you know when we do for example a specific kind of food yeah and we at the end tell what this food look like mm -hmm. you, you you eat it and then mm, this is nice mm, this is sour this is yeah you give yeah. you give your feeling your you explain what do you think about it so in total now being eight years and let me speak about the last year especially because they have done a lot of changes you are almost in the end of the year so yeah. can you give me what is your feeling about this year mimi it's gone really fast i think not learn anything 
I've not learned much, really. I'm not going to say I've not learned anything because I've picked up a few things, but they're not going to benefit me again, like I said. But I've, I don't think this year has gone as good as I wanted it to, especially when I started secondary school. It's not gone how I hoped it would go. Not, not to your expectations? Not to my expectations at all. Hmm. Like, you'd ask anyone in the school, they'd be like, oh, this is a rubbish type of school. Mm. And it's not the school, it's what they've been given what they have to do, mm. what they have to teach and the certain amount of rules you need to have. Like also at different schools, like there's loads loads of schools that are like doing the same thing. Like I asked someone from a different school, Oh how how's your school? They say, Oh it's rubbish And if you ask me the same thing I'd say exactly the same thing to be honest so cutting the fund now go down they are going to cut and you heard what the, I, I i forget even his what was jeremy corbyn oh yeah so he is uh he's going to make a different decision but he didn't tell <laughs> yeah, he didn't tell us what it was this gonna be his decision and this is the thing you've got all these leaders that are just trying to put it out each other's light to make their own shine brighter well actually guys a lot of you have got some really great policies so even if you don't get in right work with them work together mm. stop putting out someone else's light you know it's just honestly i listen i, I mean i i try not to listen to be honest because it's like they're just like children in a playground in a <laughs> spiteful egotistical like they really are children and mm. when you look at the maturity levels of life you know we really the, even in egypt i saw it you mm. know that the, they they had a dictator for so long they hadn't matured they were still behaving as children. Mm, if it is not mine, I will break it. Oh, exactly. If I don't like it, I'm going to break it. If mm. I don't like you, I'm going to hit you. If I, Like, seriously? Mm. Are we for... Uh, wallahi <laughs> to break yeah. I just find that... And I don't want my boys to see this. I want them to know what proper leadership is. Mm. I, you know, my boys actually really love their school. But I am pretty fed up with them coming home and saying I didn't learn anything. That's why my house is full of books. That's why I go down to places like WH Smith and I actually get them to like do... And I get get them to watch these TEDx talks. I share a lot of my uh, the coaching stuff and uh, alignment and value work. And, you know, Stephen Covey's and Dale Carnegie stuff. John Atharaf, um, you know, Gary V. Like they, they are surrounded by all of this positive stuff, you know, where you get in alignment with who you are. What was your purpose in life? What were you born to do in this world? Most adults don't know. Mm. And one of the reasons why a lot of kids, they have no desire to get a job or they have no idea what they want to do because guess what? The parents don't know what they want to do. The parents have not actually said, this is what I want to do with my life. This is who I am and this problem or this um, issue is worthy of my life and I'm going to go after it you know you, you've got kids coming uh, coming home from school you know and then the parents are coming home stressed out they're uh, you know they're, they're just unhappy miserable people and you only spend two months of your year at work when you take away the eight hours that you sleep on I mean these are average figures You know, because, I mean, people like myself, I mean, I, I love what I do. I work all the time. I mean, I, <sighs> I've just said to Manar, I've just written, you know, 14,000 words in the last two days for my next book. Yeah. I'm loving what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm making a big, huge global impact. Mm. And I'm sending up another rocket mm. um, with a whole firework display with that. But, you know, it, when you look at the average day and you remove um, the amount of time that you're asleep, the amount of time you're traveling eating um getting dressed and then you remove all the holidays out the year like the weekends and the bank holidays and you know your annual holidays you're pretty much left with two months of the year that you go to work and you allow those two months of the year to dictate your energy levels to actually mess with your mindset you know you're stressed out you've got managers bad managers not even good managers you've got bad processes you know and i've said to my boys smart people do not follow stupid rules <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm not going to have my boys follow laws that were created 100, 150 years ago that have no relevance to how we live our life today. You know why I'm laughing? <laughs> Because Cause I'm so funny. <laughs> <laughs> Because this is very critical what we are saying. And I think we should put some lines here, guys. Um, and from my perspective, what Don is saying is very, very important. And the rules is 
is uh, killing the creativity. Of but at the same time, we have to have a clear understanding to the boundaries of others. So yeah, it's about having uh, respect, not yeah. just for yourself, but respect for, for, for others. others. Yeah, completely, absolutely. Yeah. And Manal was just saying here, not Manal. Yeah, Manal. Manal. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was thinking about your sister. Um, you know, we, we've. Um, you know, she wants to get a job. When you look at the people who were the most successful, like when I was, I mean, you know, the, when I was in the museum up at uh, the Millennium Galleries, there was a guy there who's a silversmith. They had a huge exhibition. He started doing that work when he was nine years old. When you look at how the brain develops, right, and you look at between the ages of 11 and 16, these are your most creative times, mm. right, as a child, where you're actually developing your neuro pathways. Mm. Okay. We're not allowing children to work until they're 16 now. Why not? Why not? Why are kids not allowed to work until they're 16? Why aren't they allowed to do They are allowed now? to have sex. <laughs> oh, they're allowed to have sex and they're allowed to have a baby and they're allowed to sell drugs and God knows what. But they're not allowed to work. Ida. <laughs> we had this Sorry, con- uh, for we had this conversation actually about the conflict and <laughs> this 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 connection oh. between allowing the children to have sex while they are maybe sixteen and to interact to so have sexual interaction <laughs> and then, then you can't get then the the job till eighteen until you are eighteen and you don't have a, a ID card until you are eighteen for example so this is very uh, Majnun. yes yeah, it's upside down thinking <laughs> what, what the heck is that? I, and you wonder who is behind doing this kind of, of, of funny things and funny roles. People that don't think know how to think. People that sit in an office so far away think, oh, this is a good idea. Let's just put some paper <laughs> around on a desk and oh, we'll rubber stamp that because that's been done. And that those people from that ethnicity did this and those people from that ethnicity did that. Well, okay, we've now got a nice quota. Hmm. Ida. The labelling people. Oh, labeling. Lord, put you in a box. Uh, there is no box, guys. Yeah, there yeah. is no box. There's no thinking outside of the box because there isn't a box. <laughs> so we will go to the advertisement again. <laughs> Donald didn't like this. Equipping the generation towards a cohesive society. This is Iman FM. Siyasat ho ya madhab, culture ho ya adab. Covering local, national and international news stories. Aisi hogi takrar. Jaise miyam se nikle talwar. Hakaik sunye hafta war. Shay baje har budwar. Dalal ke ambar. Kijiye apni rai ka izahar. Muhammad Shifakat, Muhammad Saklen. Iman FM par peshkar. The most popular debate show on the airwaves. Count solicitors, experienced criminal defence lawyers in defending your rights. We can assist you get the best possible outcome if you're involved in any criminal matters, including murder, drug offences, sexual offences including grooming, terrorism, fraud and money laundering. We can provide free advice and assistance 24-7 at the police station. Call us on 0114-258-3399 at 351 Abbeydale Road, Sheffield. Visit us at carnsolicitors.com. Over 20 years experience in defending your rights. क्या आप बच्चों की शादी के सिलसिले में परेशान हैं क्या आप बर्तानिया में ही बच्चों की शादी करना चाहते हैं क्या आप एक अच्छे रिश्ते की तलाश में हैं अगर इन सवालों का जवाब हां में है तो आपका मसला हल हो गया बर्तानिया में रिहाइश पसीर आला तालीम याफ्ता किसी भी बरादरी के अच्छे रिश्तों के लिए आप رابطہ मैरिज हेल्पलाइन से इस टेलीफोन नंबर पर رابطہ कायम करें 0114242400 رابطہ मैरिज हेल्पलाइन मुसलमान खानदानों को करीब लाने का رابطہ Covershore Insurance Rotherham are your friendly local brokers who can insure all your needs, whether it is for your own car, home or property you let. We also have specialist insurers for your shop, restaurants and takeaways. We can cover all aspects of the motor trade and we have some excellent rates for taxis, minibuses and commercial vehicles, including fleet policies. All written quotes can be beaten. Please call us today on 01709 556 We are open from 9am to 5pm, Monday to Friday. Sheffield's finest buffet restaurant, Mirpuri Dera. Reviving the taste of Asian subcontinent, extensive buffet with more than 40 dishes. Nayi Intazamiya, Nea Saaf Sutra Mahor, Munfriz Khane, Chalice Zayed Dishes, Party Organizer, Mashaki Rawayat Ka Alambardar, Halal Food. Mirpuri Dera, Stanifeth Road, Donald, 0114 Under new management. Jeda Vi Pae, Ikuari Pera, O Ave Bar Bar, Mirpuri Dera. 
السلام علیکم ہم آپ کا شکر گزار ہیں کہ آپ نے الحبیب ولفر فاؤنڈیشن کے ساتھ بھرپور تعاون کیا آپ کے زکوٰۃ صدقات فدیہ اور صدقۃ الفطر بغیر کسی کمی کے ہم انتہائی غریب پس مند علاقوں کے یتیموں بیواؤں معذوروں اور ضرورت مندوں تک پہنچاتے ہیں اللہ تعالیٰ آپ کے تعاون کو قبولیت کا آرہ درجہ عطا فرمائے فار مور انفارمیشن پلیز کانٹیکٹ مولانا اسلم زائد آن زیرو سیون ایٹ نائن فور فائیو فور زیرو تھری زیرو تھری الحبیب ویلفیئر فاؤنڈیشن In a world where accident claims are poorly managed and the referral fees paid are so low, and just when all hope is lost in the city of Sheffield, a hero emerges. A hero so powerful, one phone number is all you need. A hero named Mr. Compensator. For your referral fee of £2,000, call Mr. Compensator now on 0114-3863-386. Terms and conditions apply. Locally at 103.1 on FM. Globally at imanfm.com on the internet. This is Iman FM. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Iman FM uh, on 103.1 FM and learning is gaining. And I hope you are learning uh, from what you are gaining from us. We are in Iman FM and... Um, Well, I'm really happy with Uncle Shabir because he is this person who doesn't tell us what to do. <laughs> He's not manager. <laughs> He's uh, leading us and, and, and contributing to our, um, uh, to our knowledge and he's contributing to our uh, experience and he's uh, just give us the, 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 the energy and he's giving us um, uh, the, what do you call the support. Yeah, we need and and, and just uh, we are enjoying working with him and, and I would like really to thank him uh, today especially uh, for giving all this but he made a, a very nice tea <laughs> I, I lost my voice already when I came here I, 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 I my voice wasn't very very good and see he said well I make you a good cup of tea and he did thank you very much Uncle Shabir uh, through learning is gaining <laughs> so going back to the last half an hour of the show today uh, we are speaking about education And uh, I would like to put ideas together now so we can move to the next set of, uh, of questioning what is happening in, in, in education system today. Uh, education, when we think about it, is the main stone we put to build up nations. And uh, you need to think carefully if you are building your house, you have to think carefully about the structure you are doing and you are think carefully about the material you are using. You have to think carefully about how much passionate and values and good morals you put in that uh, piece to build up other pieces on it. If you come to me and you say, I don't care about education, I don't care about health, what are you caring about? I questioned this before. And I said for the decision makers and who has the... Uh, Uh, who has a decision over the budget. So you are thinking about what? You are thinking about cleansing Syria from the map? Are you thinking about cleansing Palestine from the map? Yeah. Are you thinking about uh, supporting people with more weapon to kill each other? Are you thinking about uh, cleansing other ethnicity? Are you thinking about dividing other countries? Are you supplying these people uh, who shouldn't be supplied with the money to create problems over, all over the world? What are you thinking about? And who, who, what, are, what kind of mentality, what kind of moral values, these people who are creating the strategies uh, without implementing any British value you are claiming? Uh, if you are thinking about the money, how this money has been used and invested wisely? Uh, we are now in the era of human resources. We are now uh, in the era of uh, skilled people. We are speaking about moral laws. We are speaking about the human rights. So what is your human rights uh, claims? Uh, the, the question which all the time nagging, you know, the word nagging inside me and asking who are these people behind making these strategies? And uh, as, as Dawn said, uh, we don't see leaders anymore. We see manager and we don't see manager. We see bad managers. And the question, where these bad managers come from? They came from us. They are part of us. But why we don't fight back? Why we decided to stay silent? Why decide we decided to go into the system? Is it because it is easier choices? Is it because we are afraid to to make yeah we are we, are we afraid to make choices yeah good though of course we are well others are mm. i'm not i yeah. At the end of the day like i 
I, my my mum, right, absolutely amazing woman. She raised my brother and I and my sister. Um, she wasn't in a very uh, happy uh, space with my father. Um, so she left him with the three kids and she worked three jobs just to keep a roof over our head, keep food on the table. My mother is such a strong woman, right? And she gave me so much. She was like, know your mind, know who you are, do your best. If you, as long as you do your best, no one else can ask anything of you. And I don't care what you do in life as long as you are happy. And as long as you're not hurting anyone else, and as long as you're respectful, not just to yourself, but to your family and to others, and as long as you're not doing anything that's not safe, well, however th you, that fits for you, then that's, I'm happy. Because it, what we have to look at is people's comfort zones. Hmm. Now, again, I come back to, the, I mean, I do this a lot with people. What is your comfort zone? Well, might uh, let's ask Mimi. M Mimi, what is your comfort zone? What do you mean, what is my comfort zone? The, it, they, see, this is the thing. They should know what this is in schools. Why are we not teaching them? Yeah, I mean, she said she doesn't need to know what history is. Well, I tell you what history teaches you. History teaches you that no one's actually blooming learning what from the from the, what's have gone on before. When you look at all the historical, what we're seeing now has been happening for years. But we've just, the politicians and the government and the media have just got a better way of covering it up and actually being passive aggressive. You know your comfort zone. Say for example, would you jump out of a plane? No. No, I would. I can't wait to jump out of a plane, right? Your comfort zone, with a parachute, obviously. Oh, right, okay, yeah, then. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you'd that. Jump out. <laughs> <laughs> Give that a good want to push. <laughs> <laughs> but again, you know, the comfort zone, I would, I would quite happily travel back to Egypt. There are lots of people that would not travel to Egypt because of what's happened. You know, there are people that um, wouldn't try eating food they've never seen before that looks like, what the heck is that on my plate? Because they're only used to having egg chips and beans, or they're only used to having curry, or they're only used to having musa, which is musa, musa, musa. I don't know. Mm, it's the, it's the aubergine with. We don't eat oh, it. You don't eat it. Uh, no, we, we don't. We <laughs> no, because uh, yeah. the girls are not very much to aubergine. Nagam is not okay, very much. So your sure. comfort zone around aubergine is not very big. <laughs> yeah. You need to extend your comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? It's like travelling. I mean, I will hike up a mountain. Hmm. I would abseil down a mountain. Other people, they wouldn't need. They would be quite happy just walking along the path. You know, I'm quite happy to go and spe spend some time wild camping out in the middle of the nowhere um, with my boys in a tent by myself. I'm quite happy to go by myself. Can't going camping some people only want a hotel room and they only want five star so it's about what you your can do zone, yeah what you, what can, you can do, do what you're willing to do yeah um you know, are you willing to put your neck on the line for a cause yeah so the 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 comfort zone it seems that like it's the adventure part of us what we are able to do as adventure yeah. part are people willing to invest in invest themselves? yeah you know because there are some people that go oh, i've only got this much money mm. i can only spend within that rather mm. than you know as an entrepreneur it's like okay what do i want to achieve how much is that going to cost me i'm going to make that much money because i want to make sure i do that mm -hmm. so it's about you know stretching yourself okay um uh, I knew she was going to interrupt me. <laughs> <laughs> because I don't want to go beyond education point, you know what I mean? It's, but this is all education. These are the uh, kind of things that need to be taught uh, in schools. That's very correct. Uh, and I agree with you because they speak about, when they speak about creativity, creativity and innovation, and you, they don't supply the ch children with such ideas. So mm -hmm. how are you going to link education, uh, uh, creativity and innovation to education? If you don't, uh, if you don't li link this to the comfort zone if they don't know exactly what is what they can do as what they can't do and how emotionally they can engage in that to what extent they can engage and they to what is extent they can't engage because this is by the end of the day it's capacity and the ability to push the boundaries oh. not everybody is able to push the boundaries no, in the same why way are they not able to? because their parents have either wrapped them up in cotton wool or have done ev absolutely everything for them or they've been told they can't do this and they can't do that well how do you know they've never had a go yeah so what i'm trying to say here it's by by for example for Shah I tried something. If I I tried it and I did, it didn't matches my my taste in everything. So we have taste in everything. We have oh. taste on on the way we dress. We have taste in food. Taste is in everything. Oh. So if it didn't communicate to my taste, say I will just leave it because it doesn't communicate to my taste. And my 
a comfort zone will be limited to that because it has been tried, but it didn't match my, my color, if you want to say this, because every one of us has a different, unique way of expressing themselves. But the problem, and, and I can see that, uh, and I can see it in my children, Dawn, that they are trying to make a uh, dolly. That's uh, the, sheep. the sheep. They are trying to make us all one dolly. Ah, sheeple. Sheeple. And Manar, uh, this kind of pressure they have been put over children. Uh, and I see it in you and I see it in your sister. And I saw yesterday a girl, she was 17 years old and she was speaking about how children can be bullied, for example, if they wear something is not matching others in terms of the brand, for example. Mm, like, say, you know. So you've got like a um, different type of shoe brand uh. and it's not that good. So if, if say you got like a, a different shoe brand, but then you didn't have Nike, mm. that, that'd be such a big problem. Mm. Everyone would be like, what the hell are these and why are you wear? Like you shouldn't judge really. Like you Before should. judging mama, let's explain this point. Mm. Because I see a lot of families, they are in a limited budget. Mm-hmm. And they are really squeezing themselves badly mm. uh, financially. They are putting themselves in a very bad corner mm-hmm. because their children will be bullied in school as they weren't. They weren't. They were, wasn't. Uh, the children weren't able to wear what other children. Yeah, instead uh, of building strength, of indeed. Just, so they strengthen are strengthen your child. For yeah. heaven's sake. Yeah. Well, it's a, it's an, it's 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 more about what is happening in the schools, Don. It's a, it's the bullying issue. Is the children is able to take all this with the stress of exam, with the st- with the weaknesses in their personality themselves? Yeah, no, I get that. Yeah. Khalid has been bullied very badly, mm. right? When we mm. came back from Egypt, the schools he was in, he was told that he was a jihadi, he was a terrorist, his uh, tablet was a direct link to ISIS. Um, he was told that he was a bomber and like some of the kids in his school were actually on the way to school they would actually be doing as if he was shooting them or blowing them up uh, let's, let's see what Manar being told Manar, do you remember that story you told me about these children bullying you because you don't wear hijab and they didn't yeah. count you as a Muslim yeah oh, oh. <laughs> yeah I don't it's my choice if I don't want to wear a hijab but I think we have certain type of children that have a mindset that you ha- a girl has to wear a hijab has to like not wear anything because that's their like, comfort zone yeah but you, they shouldn't be judging me as a person no. and so, it puts me down and it, it makes me like fight back and be like you know what I don't want to wear it anymore because you, you're putting me in, in such a closed Let's um, let's yeah. let's think between this and education, Manar, because this is mama values. You were mm. able to def- in, uh, defend yourself, and you were able to make your clear understanding. Mm-hmm. And you came to me, and you communicated this with me. But linking by, you had your school school uh, homeschooling education, so because we communicated, so you yeah. learned, and you were able to back up. Mm. But for those children who doesn't have the backup, they should have it in the school. What do you think? is missing there what do you think is missing to make children confident enough to go away from their comfort zone and to become become as this dawn said uh, able to be creative and innovative and no one is creating and innovating because they haven't been given the chance to create and innovate so what is missing Mama? well think? again we should be exploring what's around us hmm. we shouldn't like out of their comfort zone does not mean you can stay in a classroom and play a game. Out of their comfort zone means go out and explore around you. Like, they are only seeing what their friends... Like, they come in, like... Say your friends come in, like, a big group. Mm. You're obviously going to believe what your friend says over your mum or dad. Mm. Your friends are... they put When you are weak, you, you mean. Yeah, yeah. when yeah. you're weak. Yeah. But if you if you go out of your comfort zone, you can see to yourself. You you know what? This is what I believe. No one needs to tell me what to do. This is what I want to do. And this is mm. what I believe. So, I think we should be exploring a lot more. So, my now, more. when you see uh, this, is what I believe, Mama, how the school is helping the children to create their image about life, their understanding, their concept of life. Well, they're not really helping at all, to be honest. Hmm. Like because the because the school itself has no say in what they do, they can't really teach children how to like have what was the word again? 
the concept of life yeah concept of life they can't really <laughs> teach children how to have a concept of life to be honest mm. so if you don't know it yourself you can't go teach it to other people now what is your concept of life mom i think we should again we should be exploring we should it's not we should be exploring living looking at how other people live and it's not about oh you have to make money you have to do that like you so it, money is a big part of life because you need it to survive you need it to thrive not yeah. just to survive yeah you need it you, you need it people look at you different with money as well and that that's not right especially when they're cutting the funds for school mm. school are putting a like tighter fixed thing now they're not letting children explore explore because it takes money mm. to let children leave explore it takes more teachers it takes more money it takes it takes more time as well my now if you're aware in the position they ask you if you were a god would mm. you change i would ask you now if they were there that they are challenging god though i'm challenging them you throw you mm. so if you were in their position mm-hmm. uh-huh, mm. and they are challenging god mm-hmm. If you were in their position, how would you, what different would you do? If I was in their position, say if I was, I could change something, it would be the way we learn like, and the things we learn, basically everything, mm. except obviously you have rules, like not to, to respect people, not to obviously use your hands mm. and hit people and violence. That I agree with that, mm-hmm. but I don't think you should isolate a child. I change that. I don't think you. Can you tell us about this isolation thing? Because I'm really interested to put it on air. Isolation. Mm. I think children quite enjoy it to be honest, because all you do is sit and stare at a wall, mm. and you've got like a cubicle. You're in a cubicle, but it's like open, but you face to the wall mm. with a little desk. And sometimes your work gets given to you if the teacher can be bothered to make you extra work sometimes it gets given to you sometimes you just have to read a book and sit down and do nothing or do extra stuff or uh let's let's think about the metaphor of putting a child in a very you remember that room you described to me you said mom it's only two four walls it's like and a prison cell. It it is a cell. Like, yeah basically they had to change it and make it bigger into a bigger room because that other one only ha- it was legit wood face so like say a horse can only see like not a horse like you know when they're like making a horse go forward mm. and it's straight yeah mm. it, they only let it see mm. straight that's why it ha- yeah they're making it blind from like everywhere else you have two wall two walls here and you have like a chair and like a little desk in front of you and you face to the wall The metaphor behind this. I can't see the metaphor myself, but I want to say it. Uh, It's a police mm. yeah, yeah, And this is the thing, you don't toe the line, then you're going to you're going to prison. Or to we're just going to eliminate you. And this is the thing. Like when, when they I are w- going to cleanse you. Oh, <laughs> when cleansing. I was a teacher, if yeah. any of the children were misbehaving... Now, I've always told my children, if you misbehave in a classroom, oh. you're stealing education from yourself and from the other people in the class. Don't be a thief. Hmm. Right, But other parents don't do that. No. When I was at the school with Khalid, um, I mean, I absolutely love the school he goes to. Hmm. Um, you know they've been absolutely brilliant with him and you know they're re- he's coming on and they're allowing him the freedom to choose how he interprets mm. the homework assignments so yes. I absolutely do love Khalid school and he's really happy there mm. um, but one of the things that um, I noticed was when we're given the objectives some people take them really quite literally mm. but it's like okay well how can we teach this objective mm. like for example just to give a very simplistic example uh, example there was i had to teach the children about uh, changeable states the color brown and um squares what did i do we made chocolate brownies right because they were learning how the science were you know if i'm if i crack an egg open or i melt the butter which one is going to go back to its original state and which one isn't Mm -hmm. okay do we need more or less Mm. okay we can have a big rectangle but we can make that into squares and the color brown is the cocoa Mm. right it's not just and it was like i mean we did all of those objectives in just one lesson Mm -hmm. and this is the thing when you look at all your objectives as an overview and like well how can we teach that what could we do there How could we incorporate that into another lesson? You could fly through that curriculum in no time at all, but give them deep, rich learning. 
you know get them hands on like um when i saying it's not just about traveling and things like that it's about actually yeah yeah the, the idea itself the phys- yes the, the, idea, physiology the physiology of, of, it of is. learning it is now we are reaching to the last 10 minutes of uh, today's show and i would like to make the all the ideas together first of all guys we have to understand that education is not about being in the school and we spoke before about the differences between education and schooling and schooling is something really different to education you have to take mm. the responsibility of your children's education you have to stop being lazy and put yourself mm-hmm. in that position where i am responsible for my children's education and you feel if you feel that your child you have to ask your children what they are doing in the school you have to ask them what they have learned there you have to ask them if they did learn something they didn't believe in it they have to come to you and talk to you about it they have to explain to you why they don't believe in that and if they don't believe in it just just don't do it and take the pun if you have if your child has to take punishment for not uh not believing something that has been told and they have justification and they have explored it then let them take that chance and to learn by themselves mm. that they can stand for their own position give them strength inside yeah give them yeah yeah so because what is happening uh, when we are keeping our ch- children safe yeah uh, we feel we think that this is the best thing to do for them and and unfortunately it is not you are killing the creativity of that child you are killing their skills sometimes i am as a chef yeah it, you are killing this the soul the actual way we have been created and i repeat this uh, on and on and on guys the first word has been taught to us in islam breed and reading means to read everything around you not to read the words only not to read only you can read the mi- images you can read the ideas you don't be limited just to the reading of words <laughs> that don't have something to say jeez go on go on t- say it <laughs> well you know this is the thing it's about not reading the same stuff over and again yeah. don't read stuff that you agree don't don't just read the stuff that you agree with all the little stuff that yeah. you believe in because all you're doing is uh, becoming stagnant you're not growing mm-hmm. read stuff you disagree with read stuff that you don't Yesterday about. we had this conversation with one uh, uh, gentleman. I, I hope he's listening to me and I say salam to him. He told me uh, how we can increase the brain and, and, and oh, great yeah. brain ability. And I told him by reading different things. Oh. You know white from black, you know black from red, you know red from green. You know green from different... You, I told him, I, I have a sister, she is an a, a internal designer. And she knows the, the differences in, in, by seeing. She knows the differences between the light, very light uh, green and very, very light green. Different type uh-uh. of green. And there is thousand degree between the dark and the light. And by seeing, she knows which degree that color is. Uh. And she can give you 705. 52 maybe mm. degree of green and you wonder where she knows this how she learned this and uh, because she was able to explore different colors but see that's the thing there's mm. no reason for people not to know stuff anymore because yeah. there are it's a open space of yeah. books there's the internet yes but the thing is when you only read the stuff that you want to the only stuff that re- just reconfirms your own beliefs or your own values you know you're not actually growing you're not understanding you're not you're not getting to connect with other people i mean like i just want to touch on the thing i mentioned about khalid in school he was able to deal with that depth of bullying Mm. because i had taught him that you know it's not about what people say about you what people criticize and judge you on it says more about them than it says about you their level of yeah, ignorance is ignorance. it is their ignorance yes. you are you know the truth if i told you that two plus two is 56 hmm. would, would you, you accept it <laughs> would you accept it of hmm. course you wouldn't hmm. because you know that two and two is four yeah so why are you allowing people to tell you that two and two is 56 that's very cool. And this is, you know, an analogy that a child will get. Mm. And parents do not take an interest in their children, uh, in their learning, what they're studying in school. And, and actually, I actually like- are lazy. And I really want to make this mm. point because I know that a lot of your listeners are, are Muslim, and we know that. Allah gave us our children as an amana. They are a trust. And if all we're doing is leaving it to the schools to educate them, we're basically saying to Allah, we didn't want that trust. And actually, it's not only this. I will add to this. It's like you are cheating that trust. Ah, and you will you, be asked about it. it. Yeah, it's, I it's, know better than you, Allah. Uh, Allah so... <laughs> I love them. 
And you know what? I will ask her to do. A, we will do the show cooperatively, maybe one day. But I am. I am really. <laughs> we'll need six hours. Yeah, we need six hours. Thank you. <laughs> we don't need two hours only. An hour and a half. So we are reaching to the light. the time is flying very, very fast when we have this show. Uh, and I have. I I hope you are learning from what we are saying, guys. We are emphasizing in values. I'm not talking about. Uh, and myself and and Don and Mimi, uh, we are here not to talk about our own experience only. We are going to we are collecting all other experiences uh, we've been through in life, other people' perspective, and we are bringing this to you, to your table, to your uh, to yourself, to evaluate and think about it. Instead of sitting hours and hours uh, watching a silly shows on the TV about the same issue, running and running around, a woman cheated on her husband, and then the ch- yeah. husband cheated on his wife, Get and they again. Life. It's getting in your it. life and it's getting this, ch- ch- you know, like cheap, cheap shows. And these people are making money from you watching them doing And all they're doing is things. giving you this message that this yeah. is what you should be thinking. This yeah, is what it's not they're just distractions. Indeed. Get on with your own life instead of watching other people. Making live your their own life. love stories. <laughs> making your own love stories. Acting yeah. out a life that doesn't even exist. Why yeah. would you waste that much time? Yeah. Get on with your own life. Yeah, just to stand on your feet again. Take take all the responsibility back and say, You have the life, guys. You have it now. And you have it now, I mean by now, because next minute we don't know what's going to happen and mm. if it, it finished it finished every forever day is judgment day it is and every second is a judgment second ah. because we may we may be here today and our voices may be coming to you through this radio but we don't we may be not next sunday and you will remember us it only by <laughs> <laughs> who knows <laughs> let's not put it out there <laughs> So we have the future in our hands now and we have uh, our ha- our children in our hands. I have to talk to myself as well and remind myself all the time with these guys because we all the time under the pressure. We might miss the way, but as we have other people around us, we can keep asking and keep questioning and, and and but just be creative and be yourself i have only 45 minutes 45 seconds maybe few minutes a few seconds for you and a few seconds for don and then we are done what do you want to say mimi i want to say that i think we should change the way of the system of like teaching children and how you teach them and it's disgusting what they're being taught what do you want to change for yourself mimi? i want to I want to change. I want to enjoy education. Hmm. That's what I want to do. I want to enjoy going to school in the morning. I want to wake up just to see, say, oh, I'm going to learn this. I'm, I'm actually wanting to go. Oh, say that, say. Don, what do you want to say? Two, two, two seconds. You have quickly. <laughs> I'm lost for words, absolutely. <laughs> it's about the time we trusted our children. Yeah, so trust your children, trust yourself, and... Iman FM, learning is gaining is done and thank you very much. Wassalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Online at www.imanfm.com And on our app, you're listening to Iman FM. In the process of working on your dreams, you are going to incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain. 